Good morning to all of you who are joining from Korea and good evening to our audience in the US. I'm Una Claire Kim and I'm in charge of government and corporate affairs at AmCham and I'll be moderating today's uh, discussion. It's my pleasure to welcome you to, well, uh, to AmCham US Embassy's joint webinar on smart technologies in robotics and automation. We're very excited to host today's webinar to discuss these two cutting edge technologies that will have a major impact on efficiency across various industries. And I'm honored to introduce our three speakers from the US private sector and Korean Business Association who are trailblazing in these leading technologies. Before we dive into the presentations from three outstanding experts in the field, I'd like to highlight a few housekeeping matters. We'll have a 10 minute Q&A at the end of the webinar, so please submit your questions uh, throughout the presentations using the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We ask you to use the, the Q&A function, not the chat function. Um, I'll then pose these questions back to the uh, speakers during the Q&A. Also, for those of you who require interpretation in Korean, there's a translation button at the bottom of your Zoom screen as well. Now, let me quickly hand over to James Kim, Chairman and CEO of AmCham for opening remarks. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I am very proud and honored to co-host with the U.S. Embassy this special webinar on smart technologies and robotics and automation. I want to thank uh, my good friend Gregory Briscoe, the Minister Counselor for Commercial Affairs of the U.S. Embassy, for his very active leadership in creating this exclusive opportunity for us to learn about the development of robotic technologies and automation systems, both here in Korea and the US. The US Embassy here in Korea uh, continues to do an outstanding job in promoting business opportunities between US and Korea. Today, uh, as uh, Claire mentioned, we have uh, a few very special guests with us today. First, Johnny Kim. He is the general director at the Korea Association of Robotic Industry. His 12 years of expertise at the association is sure to provide you with a lot of good quality information regarding the robot industry here in Korea. We're also happy to have Chen Fai Chung, the vice president and general manager of Emerson Automation Solutions in North Asia. This, I believe, is his second collaboration uh, you know, with us since the first 2021 AmCham Sustainability Seminar. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, Yvonne Pistol, the Manager of International Business Development at Gecko Robotics. Today's topic is highly relevant to the global economic trends, especially given COVID-19. And according to the recent report by the International Federation of Robots, Korea is the most automated country in the world. It boasts 631 robots per 10,000 employees. It's eight times the global average. In the US, companies have added a record number of robots this year as they rush to speed up assembly lines and, uh, and add uh, human workers. Integrating high-tech smart robots and automation across industries also ensure global competitiveness. These technologies will help create a lot more jobs for both countries. So today, we're so lucky to have three of the best experts uh, to share the latest trends, business development cases, and market opportunities. And, you know, we have close to 100 people joining this webinar today, which again shows a strong interest in learning about these latest trends. And I hope that uh, this webinar will give us a lot of learning opportunities. So today, uh, I'm super excited. So now let me hand it over to Claire uh, so she can run uh, this webinar. Thank you and have a great morning. Thank you, Jim. Now I'd like to hand it over to Mr. Greg Briscoe, Minister Counselor for Commercial Affairs at the U.S. Embassy Seoul for his remarks. Jim, uh, members of the American Chamber of Commerce and distinguished guests, uh, good morning. I am Greg Briscoe, uh, the Minister Counselor for Commercial Affairs at the U.S. Embassy here in Seoul. Uh, I am delighted to join you today, and I want to respond to Jim's uh, thank you with a, th with a big thank you also back to the uh, AmCham and for being such a good partner for us here at the U.S. Embassy. 
I also want to extend uh, appreciation to Korean Association of Robotic, Robot Industry, Emerson Automation Solutions, and Gecko Robotics for sharing their vision and unique perspective on the latest advancements made in smart technology in robotics and automation. Uh, this is a highly competitive market and has attracted the attention of some of the biggest and fastest growing companies in the world. Today's discussion is well-timed as the global manufacturing industry enters its fourth industrial revolution. Innovations in areas such as robotics and smart systems are advancing fast and across multiple sectors. Korea is striving to remain competitive in this era of industrial industry 4.0 as advanced manufacturing sectors are transforming into digital technologies and manufacturing uh, applications focus on enhanced automation. Like many other countries, Korea faces challenges due to significant demographic changes. The aging and shrinking population is pushing manufacturers to adopt smart technologies to reduce risk while increasing productivity and efficiency. The use of industrial ro robots and automation has seen exponential growth in the manufacturing sector in recent years. With improved production efficiency, safety, and quality assurance at the forefront of companies' interest, it's not surprising there is substantial ongoing investment and implementation of robotics and automation systems in manufacturing facilities in Korea and across the world. Today, manufacturers operate in harsh environments and must leverage every advantage to remain competitive on a global scale. Therefore, factors such as product quality, manufacturing efficiency, and product delivery time have become increasingly important. To address these challenges, more and more manufacturers are considering taking advantage of innovative smart capabilities to optimize all aspects of the manufacturing process and overcome supply chain bottlenecks. The outbreak of COVID-19 has further accelerated the demand for automation. To comply with quarantine measures and lockdowns, companies are increasingly utilizing robots to provide a contactless experience for consumers. And thanks to advancements in smart technologies, multiple industries are capitalizing on the benefits of these systems on a broad scale across multiple industries. Looking ahead, we will continue to foster our strong partnership with Korea and the AmCham in helping Korean and American companies lead the world with innovative and cutting edge technologies. Collaboration in these areas will be key in addressing the upcoming challenges during the transition into a new phase of, industrial, of the Industrial Revolution, which focuses heavily on interconnectivity, automation, machine learning, and real-time data. I hope that today's session becomes the stepping stone for further collaboration and partnership building. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thanks, Greg, for your remarks. With that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Johnny Kim, General Director of Korea Association of Robot Industry. Mr. Kim has been with the association since 2009, and prior to that, had a 20-year experience in both private and public sectors. He holds a bachelor's in public administration and a master's in political science from Yonsei University in South Korea. Mr. Kim will discuss the latest trends in the Korean robotic industry. Mr. Kim, the floor is now yours. Uh, thanks a lot, Anna. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to have a chance to introduce Korean robotics to you. Uh, Korean industries such as semiconductors, uh, electronics, shipbuilding, automotive are regarded as highly competitive in the global market. But when it comes to robotics, many still don't know much about what's happening in South Korea. Before I talk about Korean robotics, let me first introduce my association briefly, and I will touch upon global robotics market. Korea Association of Robot Industry was established in 1999 it consists of over 200 robot companies. Our main business areas are, first, we organize international robot exhibition, RoboWorld, 
in the late October annually. If you'd like to get to know more about Korean robotics, please come to visit the exhibition next year and enjoy the show. We also engage in international about standards, the standardization activities. We compile and distribute Korea robot statistics. Going to the global robot industry, according to World Robotics 2021, listed by the International Federation of Robotics, a record of 3 million industrial robots are operating in factories around the world. And series of new robots grew slightly despite the global coronavirus pandemic with 384,000 units installed globally in 2020. To the customer industry, electrical, electronics, and the automotive industry were two main lower markets globally, followed by metal, plastic, and food. And Asia remains the world's largest market for the industrial robots. 71% of the all newly deployed robots in 2020 were installed in Asia, Asian countries such as China, Japan, South Korea. And China has been the biggest market for the industrial robots. And in 2020 with 168,000 units installed. Japan remained the second to China with 38,000 units installed. And Japan is also the biggest provider of the industrial robots. Almost 50% of the global robots are Japanese brands. And here, South Korea is the fourth largest robot market in terms of annual installations, following China, Japan, and United States. Now going to the, the United States. Uh, New installations in the United States in 2020 were 31,000 units. Uh, while the automotive industry demanded substantially fewer robots in 2020, uh, 10,000 units, installations in the electrical electronics industry grew by 7% to 3,700 units. Now I'll talk about the Korea Robotics. Robot installations decreased by 7% last year to 30,000 units in 2020. And main customers of the industrial robots are semiconductors, LCD, LED, and other electrical electronics industry. Also auto, automotive industry is a big market. Uh, Korea is also keeping its lead status as the country with the world's highest robot density, 932 robots per 10,000 manufacturing employees. Considering the global average density of 126, Korea robot density reflects a huge automation rate in the Korea manufacturing industries. According to Korea's Global Association, it is estimated that over 2020 robot companies in Korea in 2019, and we have 31,000 employees in the robot industry. To the search volume, the Korean robot industry recorded uh, 5.1 trillion won in sales in 2019 and out of which industrial robots take the biggest part with 3.4 trillion one and service robots, uh, 646 billion one and robot parts 1.5 trillion one. Now, Korea government policy chapter. Korea has a 40 year history of making robots and the Korean government has played a pivotal role to promote the industry. Government in, uh, designated robot ins as a new growth engine in 2003. And since 2008, a series of government initiatives, such as enactment of a Robot Development and Promotion Act,
have helped push the Korea robot industry going forward. Government also established a robot industry promotion organization, Kiria, to initiate the project to expand the industry. Many challenging in initiatives, such as robot land and robot testbed, have been experimented. The third master plan for intelligent robotics was presented in 2019 with initiatives to make Korea one of the leading global robot powerhouses. For example, there will be more industrial robots installed in the industries such as casting, welding, molding, FMB, and apparel industry. Robotics in service robot areas, including logistics, medical robots will be supported to promote further advancement. Now move to the major trends in Korean robotics. I summarized uh, the new major trends in three categories. The first one is uh, several conglomerates such as Samsung, LG, Hyundai Motors, SK put much their weight to robotics recently. Hyundai Motor Company bought Boston Dynamics for their future business. Uh, Boston Dynamics is one of the leading American robot tech te technology companies. Uh, here is a video clip of uh, what Samsung Electronics is doing for the future with robot technology. Robotics combines Samsung's innovative hardware and cutting edge AI software to create solutions that both care for you and help you along the way. Whether you're at home or outside of it, you are at the center of all our innovations. Now, we're going to show you what this looks like in a not too distant future. First, Samsung BotCare uses AI technology to take care of all the little details in your life by recognizing and understanding your behaviors to be a better robotic assistant and a companion. You've been on your computer too long. How about stretching and taking a short break? The conference call is scheduled in a few minutes. BotCare knows your schedule and your habits and can remind you of the conference call you have with colleagues coming up in 15 minutes. Now remember the bot you saw in our studio earlier? That was Bot Handy, a home robot that can both recognize and grab objects, becoming an extension of you in the kitchen, in the living room, and anywhere else you may need that extra hand in your home. Bot Handy, let's show them what you've got. Bot Handy uses AI to understand objects like a glass cup or ceramic plate, taking note of their shape and materials to work as your trusted partner. Bot Handy can move around and do things like set the table or put away groceries, it flips the script on what a robot in your home could look like. Good job. Uh, another new trend is SMEs exploring uh, adoption of robots. As I just mentioned, mentioned, electronics and automotive industry have been two main robot customers for a long time. Traditional industries are beginning to adopt robots with a strong government initiatives. Amid this pandemic, robot introduction in the traditional industries increases with the need of flexibility and productivity. The last new trend is many Korean startups companies are also diving into the robot market. And this is a chicken frying robot. And this is a rehab robot. And this is a gym bot and the autonomous support robot. This robot makes coffee and this is a receptionist robot. 
this robot delivery robot at warehouses. In fact, two robot startups of Korea went public this year and many is preparing for going public. Now, this is the closing part of my presentation, future of robot Korea robotics. How will be the future of Korea robotics? Many agree that now K-pop is a, a global phenomenon. Several years back, many were infatuated with Gangnam Style and BTS and the Blackpink. They sing dance very well, really well. And 2020 Academy Award ceremony was a total shock to me, also probably many Koreans. I vividly remember Jane Fonda's naming of Parasite for the best picture trophy. And sixth episode of Skid Game made the audience home and abroad cry. K food is also getting popular globally, delicious, and regarded as well being food. Then, which will be the next runner as a K wave or K trend? How about robotics? As many Korean robot companies closing their doors, even Rodney Brooks rethink robotics of the United States. Am I pessimistic? No, on the contrary, I am optimistic about Korean robotics and robot future. Hardworking, industrious, dedicating, and creative robot engineers here of Korea. I will finish my presentation with the following video clip of young Korean startup company. I'm so grateful to be a part of this wonderful webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kim, for your very interesting and comprehensive presentation. Um, now let me introduce our second speaker, Mr. Chen Fai Chung. Mr. Chung is Vice President uh, and General Manager of North Asia uh, for Emerson Automation Solution, which is a global technology, industrial software, engineering, and manufacturing company. Mr. Chung holds a bachelor's in engineering from Nottingham Trent University in the UK. Mr. Chung will be discussing advanced autom automation and technologies and their impact on capital project and performance for Korea's plant industries. Over to you, Mr. Chung. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Kre. Uh, good morning to everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the U.S. Embassy and MCHAM for today's uh, engagement opportunity. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to share the topic of smart technologies in automation uh, from Amazon perspective with you. Uh, so today I'm presenting from inside of our state-of-the-art solution center located in our headquarters here in Yongin. Uh, right behind me, you can see that uh, the digital plant set up uh, with our technologies and solutions. Uh, since opening in 2018, this solution center has uh, drawn about 1,700 visitors, including customers, uh, university students, professors, and government officials uh, to come and visit us. Uh, they came here to learn, uh, to experience, and adopt these new technologies and new ways of working uh, in order for them to embark on the digital transformation journey. Uh, I would like to extend my invitation uh, to all of you who have the interest in this area to come and visit this solution center, okay? Uh, let me give you a brief introduction to Amazon. Uh, Amazon is a global technology, industry software, engineering, and manufacturing company uh, with a 130 year legacy of helping process and discrete uh, manufacturers automate and optimize operations uh, through the best in class technology and industry expertise uh, with 88,000 employees and 200 manufacturing locations around the world. Uh, just like Mr. Kim has mentioned about the robotic trend, you know, like in our manufacturing facilities, we are also embarking on uh, implementing uh, more robotics uh, into the factories. Uh, here in Korea, uh, since the establishment of the office here 33 years ago, we have been making continuous investment to serve our customer here. Uh, we have grown to about 650 employees and 10 facilities uh, that, can, that continuously strengthening our sales, uh, service, and manufacturing capabilities in Seoul, the Daesan, Ulsan, Yosu, and Busan area. Uh, we have been uh, driving uh, diversity and inclusion initiative as well, and received uh, recognition from the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family. Uh, 
Amazon has put our industry tailored experience and technologies to take on the toughest challenges and bring predictable results uh, to our customer in the industry in Korea. Uh, we serve in petrochemical, power, marine shipbuilding, uh, life science, uh, steel, semiconductor industry, uh, as well as engineering contractors for the export business as well. Uh, we are very proud you know, to share the growth journey of the Korean industry and walk this journey together for the past 30 over years. Uh, with our top quarter initiatives, uh, Amazon has helped our customer perform among the best uh, top 25% uh, as compared to their industry peers. Uh, from capital project perspective, uh, by digitally transforming projects uh, through modern project management strategies, innovative engineering practices and digital technology for project execution. Uh, this is especially important because throughout the pandemic period, a lot of the site services, the startup and commissioning work has been impacted uh, due to the number of people that allowed to be at the site to perform this function. Uh, by being able to utilize technology for this purpose, and has helped the situation tremendously. Uh, and for the plant operation side, uh, by taking approach to partnering with customers to achieve top quarter operational performance in the areas of safety, reliability, production, and energy with emission management, uh, as you see on these slides. Uh, let's take a look at what we see in the marketplace regarding target investment areas of some major industries. Uh, like for example, in life science space, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers are exploring uh, the technological breakthrough to solve the CGMP manufacturing challenges. You know, this is the, the current good manufacturing practice regulation enforced by the FDA. Uh, and also the customer in this space would like to create effective solutions for improving data management and pipeline acceleration. The metal and mining industry is focusing on identifying uh, process efficiency. And now uh, added on is the sustainability part. Uh, and this is becoming a major drive, uh, especially with the carbon tax in place. Uh, Korean companies you know, are investing in overseas as well, you know, from a mining perspective because of the EV battery demand is driving up the lithium material requirement. And for the automotive industry, you know, the big, big shift uh, of changing uh, from internal combustion engine to EV. And then for the power industry, uh, this is uh, in a very dynamic time right now. Uh, modern, modernization, regulation, uh, compliance, and switching of energy source uh, is on top of their agenda. And uh, in terms of energy industry, you know, on a long-term perspective, uh, it will have its challenges because of uh, fossil fuels uh, go on the decline and emission constraints are increasing. Uh, this is uh, also actually because of that, this is also becoming the fast movers to shifting to remote and autonomous operation uh, that I will talk about more in a minute. And then also, of course, the food and beverages area as well. Uh, the food safety is very important. So every industry have the dynamics going on right now. Those industry needs that I talked about just now, uh, you know, are creating a global mega trend. Uh, we are seeing four major automation mega trends uh, going on uh, in the market right now. Uh, the first one is infrastructure modernization. Regardless of industry, Continuously extending the useful life of the existing infrastructure and optimize performance to stay uh, competitive against uh, peers in the industry is of paramount importance. Sustainability and decarbonization is the hottest topic globally right now, you know, for good reason, of course. Uh, COP26 has just concluded. And um, last weekend, actually, right, is uh, fresh from the hour, the climate actions are the focus after the summit. Uh, we are seeing more and more customer setting ESG targets to adhere to the changing environmental regulations around the world uh, and participating in the energy transition area as well. Uh, digital transformation uh, is an essential uh, and updated approach to doing business 
uh, aided by technology to solve problems, uh, optimize production, and increase safety and reliability. Uh, the fourth one is uh, autonomous uh, operations. We are seeing a few industries uh, have already started to advance to autonomous operations, uh, mainly driven by the business value that can be created, uh, such as uh, risk management, production and profitability improvement, and sustainability and people empowerment. The way we show uh, the four trends on this uh, chart here are, are that they are very distinct, but actually in reality, they are all intersect and feeding uh, each other as well. Uh, automation technology providers uh, such as Amazon uh, can really help the industry and users in each of these areas. Uh, one of the automation mega trends we are seeing rapidly gaining momentum here in Korea is uh, infrastructure modernization. Uh, Korean customers are investing in the modernization of existing facility uh, as it is key to enabling those organizations to unlock operational performance in the area of better reliability, enhanced safety, you know, like higher productivity and lower emission and energy usage. The older plants uh, are being revitalized with digital solutions and latest technology to achieve these values. Uh, one example here uh, in Korea, in the power industry, uh, our uh, customer needed to upgrade their four gigawatt power plant uh, that are facing uh, enormous challenges like accelerated occurrence of machinery failure, end of life um, control module and exceeding environmental emissions limit. Above all, they also would like to be an uh, eco-friendly company, right? So uh, we are provided them with solutions that enable the user to monitor, to control and optimize uh, real-time operations, as well as uh, managing the emission across all the production units. Uh, another case uh, is our customer, uh, the world's uh, second largest electrolytic copper maker. Uh, it went through a plant modernization project. Our solutions provided uh, with the control and asset management system uh, to support them to embark on their digitalization initiative. Uh, there are an increasing number of companies around the world are transforming their business portfolio, starting up new ventures or reorganizing company structure and making investment to embark on the sustainability and decarbonization journey. Uh, some of it due to law and regulations compliance and being a responsible company. And some of it simply because it's good business. You know, during this uh, energy transition journey, there are also plenty more uh, new businesses uh, and opportunity uh, in creating in this area. We see four major strategies uh, for sustainability. Uh, the development of low carbon fuels and power sources, the reduction in emission, uh, electrification and system integration, improving energy and resource efficiency and decreasing waste. Korea is looking to build a society uh, that harnesses hydrogen as a source of energy for mobility and power generation. Fuel cell power generation is estimated to be account for 10% of total power generation by 2050. Uh, and we have worked with a major power generation company over here on various fuel cell type projects, including the largest fuel cell power plant in Korea. Uh, from emission standpoint, you know, our advanced analytic and government reporting solution to comply with the regulation uh, is making contribution to our customer in meeting their carbon neutrality commitment. And then uh, also, you know, another example is uh, with the Korean lithium battery related companies. Uh, they are expanding in the secondary battery material processing area uh, due to the surging EV demand. Uh, Amazon solutions have provided uh, precision measurement flow and process control solutions for cathode material customer to produce high quality products and achieving operational goals. Uh, and it, over here, uh, we are saying that, uh, seeing that automation is entering into the next inflection point uh, with digital transformation. While technology is certainly a critical part of digital transformation, 
is just one piece of a large ecosystem that must pull in both people and processes to truly be successful. Uh, at its core, digital transformation is about using technology solutions to rethink business process and performance. Uh, if you, as you see on this chart here, you know, from an automation perspective, we have uh, evolved from hardware-centric computerized control in the 80s. And some people say that uh, period of time is the beginning of the digital transformation. And then move on to network-centric control plus uh, diagnostic to today's uh, software-centric uh, digitalization era. Uh, today, the industries uh, can be benefited from digital transformation by having relevant data and smart analytics that drives business value. Uh, contextualization of data enables uh, leaders to make business decisions with the best and most current information. Uh, taking existing data as well as insights from new sensors and make them actionable. Uh, this will give the plant managers, you know, the power to detect uh, issues before they actually arise. Uh, and also to be able to mitigate problems and optimize operations. For one of the pharmaceutical customer here, uh, Amazon has provided uh, with uh, process analytics software that enable simple and actionable process insight on their key assets, uh, such as reactors, heaters, and columns. Uh, we help to reduce cycle time of issue detection to diagnostic, to collective action, and prescriptive root cause analysis. Uh, another example here is an uh, industry guest customer uh, who has a concern on the startup and operational shutdown uh, duration. We provided them with operator training enabled by digital twin solutions. You know, the customer has experienced the proven result on cost avoidance from identifying issues uh, during simulation to avoid startup delays. And also there is a specialty chemical customer had a, had a plan, you know, to implement digital technologies to achieve uh, its digital plans initiative. We deploy our wireless infrastructure and sensor solutions for their advanced analysis and remote monitoring. Um, the last mega trend here I would like to touch on is uh, autonomous operation. As we look across our industries, uh, we are seeing challenges such as uh, increasing remote and distant locations, uh, as well as skilled workforce uh, shortages. Uh, these challenges are really driving customers to increase their focus on shifting on-site automated operations to both autonomous and remote uh, automation capabilities. Uh, on this chart, starting from the bottom, and uh, which is a uh, manual and simple automated uh, area uh, operation, uh, advancing to the top, the ultimate autonomous or fully remote uh, will be the end game. Uh, addressing this has added benefits uh, in terms of increased uh, process and personal safety as well as delivering on sustainability goals and de-risking the operation with uh, maximizing profit. Uh, so there is a lot to be gained from pursuing these strategies. These strategies are highly connected with digital transformation programs. Uh, by no means it's easy. You know, as you can see, it takes uh, quite a few digital technology components, such as uh, online digital twin uh, operational analytics software uh, AI, machine learn, learning, uh, seamlessly, they have to work together to realize the promise of uh, fully autonomous or fully remote operations. Uh, Amazon has one of the most comprehensive technology portfolios uh, to enable both autonomous and remote operations. Uh, we have been working with uh, many global customers uh, to bring them up this, uh, the maturity index of autonomous operations. Uh, that's all that I would like to share with you today. Uh, I hope you find it relevant uh, and interesting. Uh, feel, free to, feel free to contact me uh, should you like to discuss any of these uh, topics uh, further. Uh, again, uh, I would like to extend my invitation to you uh, to come and visit our solution center, you know, to see all this uh, latest technology in play. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chu, um, for your very inspiring uh, presentation and pr for personally joining from your uh, solution center in Yongin. I'd love to visit the center as well. Um, now, last but not least, our final speaker today is Ivan Postov, International Business Development Manager for Gecko Robotics. Ivan is a lifelong tech entrepreneur and leads international expansion at Gecko Robotics. Uh, Ivan will share his insights on the application of uh, advanced robotics te technologies in industrial and critical infrastructure. Over to Ivan. Yep, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, my name is Ivan Pistsov. Um, I lead international business development of Geoc Robotics, and I wanted to thank a lot the American uh, Chamber of Commerce creating this event and having me in this event, and I'm happy to share more information uh, about Gecko uh, and how we can help you uh, to self uh, solve maintenance maintenance problems at your power plants. Uh, so Gecko Robotics is a robot enabled software company that helps maintain and protect the most critical uh, infrastructure. In this short conversation, I'll give you a bit more information about the company, uh, about the technology, and share some experiences, and I'm sharing my screen. So uh, at this screen, you see uh, both pieces of the equation. On the left, our robot, our hardware. It's one of the robots uh, that we have, one, one type of the robots that we have. Each robot uh, collects uh, ultrasound thickness measurement of the, of the surface it goes uh, over. Each of those measurements comes with its own X, Y coordinates, so we know exactly where the measurement was taken. The measurements are equivalent to the handheld devices, with the only, of, with the only differences is the number of measurements. So it's anywhere from uh, 200 to 2,000 measurements per second, depending on the type of the robot. On the right, you see the second piece of the equation and the most important piece of the equation, the data visualization platform. So we can visualize uh, the inspection results in a very natural and obvious manner so that you don't have to be an expert to understand what the state of the asset is. Then we add a very useful uh, uh, adjusting uh, and zooming uh, uh, functionality that helps identify the places for immediate, immediate repairs. And we add additional components for predictive maintenance to help avoid uh, asset failures in the future. Uh, this is a short list of our customers, and they roughly fall into three big buckets, power generation, oil and gas, pulp and paper, and others. And as you can see, uh, there, are, there are some uh, Miller names. Uh, GS is everywhere in Seoul. I'm in Seoul today after completion of two inspections and countless of meetings with customers and partners. It was a very, very successful trip, so I'm excited to go back and take advantage of of my meetings to come back next year for more work. Uh, so, uh, despite uh, despite COVID, uh, which really hindered uh, our global development in 2020, 2021, despite all the restrictions, we made it uh, on almost all continents uh, to uh, South America, uh, Australia. We work in Asia with JS Group so far, but it will soon change to much more customers. Uh, in Europe, uh, we worked with multiple customers this year and we opened our uh, branch in Netherlands in collaboration with Siemens Energy. This is our competition. This is the traditional method of doing uh, asset integrity inspection, a man on a scaffold, or even worth a man on a rope. This method has obvious drawbacks. First, it takes a lot of time. Like this, on this video, you see that you have to, you have to build a, a building inside of a building, the full scaffold to access to the points of measurements. Then you need an army of inspectors that, that takes forever to inspect uh, point by point. It, call, it, is, it is a very dangerous job. Uh, people are falling from scaffolds, but people are exposed to all sorts of dangerous atmospheres 
and uh, temperature, uh, high temperature, low temperature. So there are a lot of places where you don't want to send humans, but instead send uh, robots. Current methods uh, have a lot of cost associated with it. Number one is the downtime. For a power plant, uh, one day of not operating is hundreds of thousands, at least for a small plant, hundreds of thousands per day in lost revenue. In the refinery, one day of downtime can be millions of dollars. Additional costs include infrastructure and army of inspectors plus all the risks that comes with manual inspection. But the biggest challenge is the data quality. This slide you see side by side results of inspection from traditional inspection uh, with tra traditional method with the rows of scaffold and rows of measurements. And you can certainly spot wall thinning here, here, that's the low thickness area. Well, for maintenance manager, the biggest challenge is to understand, okay, what do I do now? Do I replace those affected areas or I replace the whole wall just in case? So it's always a trade-off. And there are obvious risks, missing problem areas or overdone repairs that accumulates over time and becomes pretty substantial over time. Then look at the right, contrast this with our inspection. Uh, I think it was a boiler inspection uh, that we done a complete coverage of boiler walls. You can see uh, areas that were freshly repaired. Those quadrants, uh, squares of fresh metal. But even more so, you can see how much, much, how much they missed. All this red area is the areas of low thickness. It will be a problem if not today, tomorrow. So with perfect information, maintenance managers can make a perfect decisions about what to repair and what to repair and how to extend the life of the asset. That's an overview of uh, demonstrating our robots on different types of assets. And you can see we can inspect assets from the inside, from the outside, uh, during a short outage, uh, or even during operations. We have robots that sustain up to 120 Celsius temperature. The pipeline inspection we done in JS Caltex refinery uh, last week uh, was done in the pipeline that uh, was in operation. Second piece of the equation. This is how we present the results. Compared to the current solutions uh, that maintenance managers have to work with, it's night and day. It's from Excel to the digital model that shows everything in a very ti uh, tiny detail, in a very obvious way. You can hover over any place of this map. It tells you the exact location where the measurement was taken, the value of the measurement. You can click in and you see the photo of the surface. There are a lot of statistical information that helps produce reports, helps uh, helps zoom in on problem areas. All the results can be also presented in Excel files. So we don't look customers to our system. If they prefer to use our visualization platform, they're free to do so. If they want to download Excel, please uh, download Excel and use your current maintenance system. In addition to Excel, the old school in a moment, yes, so we can also uh, generate a digital model of the asset which really puts the uh, asset condition at the fingerprints of the maintenance managers. We work with equipment manufacturers as well, because this information not only gives them information about what to fix, but also how to improve the operation of the, uh, of the asset and how to make design changes that make, uh, make uh, they increase the uptime uh, of the asset. And moving on to the next slide, this is, this is our destination. Uh, this is uh, the, where our technology will be. And we currently have those projects one by one when we wrap our inspection results over 3D uh, card model uh, of the actual asset. 
So we bring uh, all assets in one place. We can store uh, information uh, from our inspections. We can add uh, information from the customer own inspections and then bring it all together to help maintenance, maintenance managers prioritize and schedule uh, inspections on site. And that's the end of my short presentation and uh, the summary of the uh, of the value that uh, robotics inspections in uh, asset integrity uh, bring to the table. Number one is the minimum and very short preparation for the inspection and the very short inspection outage. The short downtime means uh, coming back to operation faster and generating more revenue. Uh, with perfect information, our maintenance managers that use uh, our, our platform can do very targeted repairs. And when they know exactly what to fix, exactly how to extend uh, the uh, repair area. With the customers that we work for a long time, they report 82 to 90% uh, reduction in, uh, in tube leaks, that's specifically to boiler, power plant boiler inspections. And of course, uh, with uh, a footprint reduced five to 10 times with the inspection of window reduce double or half of the, I'm sorry, half of the, uh, of the normal schedule. Uh, it's significantly reduces the exposure of the personnel. Uh, we have robots that can do a uh, non-confined space entry inspections. So we can, uh, our customers can avoid sending people into places that are dangerous for people. And combined, we help uh, asset managers globally in, in Korea have their assets at their fingerprint, uh, fingertips. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, I hope uh, the Amcham will share my contacts. So if any questions, I'm always happy to have a deep discussion. Thank you, Ivan, for your very interesting presentation. And so now we will begin our Q&A session. Um, some people have submitted some questions through the Q&A function. So let me just go through it and see. One quick question, I guess this is directed to Mr. Kim, is that uh, in your presentation, you said that most of the installed robots are for manufacturing areas. And so do you have any case of robot implementation in logistics and distribution industry in Korea? Would you like to answer that question? Yeah, I just contacted with a a city of a major log logistics company. Uh, they are using pelletized robots for a box picking, but you know it's not that common. Uh, they are using uh, piece picking for the experiment now. Not that common case. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is, what do you think is the main growth driver for the Korean robotics industry uh, going forward? Uh, Mr. Kim, the question is, what do you think is the main growth driver for the Korean robotics industry? Uh, as uh, Korea Robot Dentistry shows, uh, we have a lot of uh, big companies using robotics, like uh, Samsung Electronics, Hyundai, also automotive industry. Uh, uh, so we have a lot of experience. Also, I think we have a good uh, experience, skillful workers. Uh, they no, robotics, robotics, but we use robotics to the system inter integration and make some kind of, you know, the, make the robots to work for the specific tasks and activities. So I think that's our uh, the main strong point of Korean workers. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chung, a question would be, uh, what most excites you about the near future of the automation in the manufacturing space as it relates to Emerson? Yeah, uh, you know, in terms of automation, traditionally is focused on optimizing production processes. You know, it's, uh, now it is becoming one of the critical tools that we, our customer, uh, can use to meet their sustainability and decarbonization goals as well. Uh, many companies have set their 2050 targets. Uh, while these uh, targets are quite a distant uh, down the road, their sense of urgency to start showing progress now 
uh, especially after the COP26 Glasgow Climate Pact is out. You know, every decarbonization move we make today and tomorrow is a learning opportunity. Um, some are very in a very new space. That's why, you know, we need to continue to explore. And uh, progressive companies are, are first movers generally to dive in and uh, taking steps to learn and improve. Uh, of course, there are uh, quite a fair bit of risk involved, right, being the first mover, but the, the, the greater risk to, is not to move uh, or move too slowly. Uh, and our automation software and technology can help uh, companies uh, achieve uh, small wins that provide measurable results and key learnings that uh, show progress towards meeting their sustainability goals. Uh, and most importantly, the ability to scale up for maximum results. Uh, and we can help uh, lower the risk and support our customer on their journey. Um, you know, we are excited uh, to collaborate to see how these uh, innovative ideas are being translated into real solutions, you know, and then coming to the market faster than ever uh, compared to before so that we can support the world's sustainability commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Um... And I guess the question for Ivan would be, uh, what are your plans for growth going forward in Korea? And specifically, have you had any challenges uh, operating or uh, making business opportunities in Korea? I understand that you are in Korea right now, um, but you know, any insights uh, related to that you, you could share? Yes. Um, well, after three uh, successful inspections uh, with GS Division Power Group and one, one inspection with the refinery, uh, oil and gas group uh, company, we are working on the long-term service agreement. So this would be our first operationalized customer with uh, increasingly large volume of orders. But through this travel, I met so many other prospect companies, specifically in power generation, that we definitely have more business starting this January. Our next return is next, next January, but moving uh, to spring will have much more going on. Uh, speaking about the challenges, I would say that uh, language barrier is a thing, uh, especially at the plant level. Engineers often don't speak English. So it's our labor speaking English, communicating at the plant level with non-speaking uh, engineers is a challenge. And we work with uh, local uh, inspection uh, companies uh, on the partnership to deliver the service uh, jointly, to make it easier for the customer. So that's our priority to work through a local uh, local partner. Understood. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Somebody asked if it's, is it possible to engage in an OEM agreement? I'm not sure if that rings any bell with any of you. Um, would that be something that you might be able to answer? Is it possible to engage in an OEM agreement? If that's a question to me, uh, we manufacture our robots uh, in Pittsburgh in our office. Uh, we also can have contract uh, with uh, Olympus uh, to manufacture our advanced sensing technology. So nothing as of now, as of, as of right now, but uh, potential in the future. Got it. Um... I think that covers all the questions that we have for today. Uh, and I understand we are already over time. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, we will share some content information uh, that you might be able to reach out to. So um, uh, yeah, we would encourage you to uh, utilize that resource. Um, so I'd like to thank again uh, all three of our speakers for their very insightful presentations today and uh, overview of how advanced robotics and automation could transform the way we work. Um, as I mentioned, if you have any questions on today's presentation and want to follow up, uh, please reach out to Antonius Lududakis and just, uh, Jessica Son at the U.S. Embassy Seoul for more information. Um, a recording of today's webinar will also be made available through our YouTube channel, and we'll send you a follow-up email with that YouTube video link as well as the uh, embassy contact information, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, so again, thank you very much for joining, and I hope that you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.